Okay, so here we are, Galactic Destiny. Hoping we're coming near the end, but I have these fears, as you know, um, that it's going to take quite some time to break sort of the stalemate in the game. That may not be a bad thing normally. I just haven't been too excited about this, even though it should be my taste. The party of the current Prime Minister collects double resources from its sectors. Yeah. Who's current Prime? That's red, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Humans gather to pray to the supposed return of an ancient. All humans are immediately exhausted. Alright, I'll have to go through and do that. I'll find out what's human, what's not. And all Tumba gain the assassin ability uh, of the Tasathi. Any Tasathi assassin Tumba already in play become master assassins. Okay, that's interesting. Alright, now we grab three sectors and it's kind of odd to me I expected there to be a reshuffle the sectors card so far eh, maybe there are we haven't gone through all that many events 24 infamous sector adjacent became a galactic cesspool of dark dealings ah cool okay so anyway that's 24 which looks like it's over here Twenty-nine, which I think is this one. I'm seeing a lot of player sectors falling to campaign here. And then forty-three, home to the worst, harshest of Jur imperators. You know, there's a lot of story in these, but it's a story that unless it existed somewhere else. It's kind of hard to get into. I mean, a board game with a story is interesting and all. I'm finding this one tougher uh, to grab than, say, I don't know, Dark Ember or something like that. Now we're going to make a quick roll, see how, uh, whether or not these uh, become an infestation. Uh, we don't have a lot of corruption. We have uh, plus one, it looks like, from one shadow token, and that's it. And no, nope, it doesn't go over. So nobody's got any free attacks except against maybe this one white territory. That kind of makes things a little bit more difficult uh, towards victory. What, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Green's at eight, purple's at one, sort of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So purple's in the lead right now, I guess. Oh, green's got a nine tone sort of over there, too. Two, three, four, five, six, seven for red. Yeah, I felt more likely last turn. I don't know if it's going to happen or not this turn. Well, we'll see. Uh, anybody got a huge amount of influence stocked up? Remember, people are going to get some more, but at this point, got a couple people white and, and purple have 20. Red has 20, green does not. So purple is kind of a threat, but they don't have many senators. They have two crappy senators. Oddly, they didn't. Oh, they're out of senators. So as a p faction, they may be really in trouble unless they can get somebody to sell them more senators. That's going to be a hard trade. They may have to give away provinces for that, which they certainly don't want to do right now. Well, the main thing that happened during the Senate phase was red was able to kind of con get everybody to ignore their situation, which is quite scary with 70 influence sitting on them. Uh, with uh, the best initiative because of Planet 10, <sighs> they should actually be able to win this turn, I think. They instead got everybody to target green. And Green was sitting on the Justice Minister. A lot of people were in danger of being prosecuted. There was an assassination attempt. Eventually, uh, some... Oh, what are they? I don't know what they are. Not blackmail. Public humiliation cards were played. They were targeted for prosecution with an obviously guilty. And then the other 
Another Green Senator was targeted. Two Green Senators were removed from play, one by early retirement, one uh, by execution. And that puts Red in a much, much more powerful position. They don't have to worry as much about Green being able to beat them. Um, basically, I had to roll some dice to determine, hey, did anybody really notice what Red's got set up right now? Because they don't look like they're a couple planets behind. Purple and Green were in the stronger position. Purple's sitting on nine planets, but with very weak senatorial holdings. Green had strong senator holdings, but they also had uh, a significant, uh, the nine planets. Red sitting on the eight planets, but with all that influence. Now, Purple has a pile of influence, too, though. They have 50-something. So if Red goes for it, and Red certainly will, there's a good chance that it'll come down to a fight of influence between them and Purple. Huge amounts are going to be spent for that. Uh, you know, so it's still up in the air. It's still possible something could happen. Uh, it's very much designed for that balance of power. We're going to move into the intrigue phase, and what's interesting here is that Red will be going last in this, behind white. We'll see what else we have there. Uh, green is the only one with a title. The others are not. Yellow will be going first, and then blue. And that's a setup that's really strongly to Red's advantage. A lot of military action this time. Yellow, Yellow decided to hold back. It's almost a concession at this point, but they didn't want to push forward. They want to save uh, their activities for trying to pursue the um, campaigns. They're also looking at, if I don't pick up a lot of uh, <coughs> corruption, I may be able to survive while other people are struggling a little longer. White's also, in, interestingly, in that position where they have a handful of senators they can start bringing in slowly just by having been the rebels for so long they haven't been losing anyone. Let's take a look uh, after that the blue. Blue says I have to start improving my position <coughs> but just grabbing more territory doesn't seem like the way to do it. I've already started on this route with the Galactic Center. I'm gonna go for another one and I don't remember which one this is. Ten had a very interesting power um, I think that's what they're on. Oh no, they're on eight. Eight had uh, once per turn in the buying phase. They can remove a shadow token for, from play for one money. That's a whole shadow token, not just a corruption. <coughs> that can be very powerful towards allowing them to expand without taking the penalties. So that seemed like a good move for them, along with their political advantage. They don't really have the economics to buy senators the way uh, some of the others do, although they also, like White, have a pile of them remaining, I believe. Uh, let's look next. Purple. Purple went after White. Hey, that's the freebie. And went after uh, a clear terrain area. That would be enough to win, except Green went after them and grabs two of their territories, or is in position to likely do so. White moved after two of Green's territories, and then Red said, ah, I only need two. Went for two. Now, of course, White can campaign against Red, but look at the treasury that Red has in backup. Now, everybody in the game can give White influence in order to prevent Red from winning, um, and that'll probably happen. But all the same, it is kind of a nice position. White's going to have to and they do have a senator left. They're going to have to campaign against Red. But Red may have... Do they have a Tumba? Yes, they have a Tumba. So they have an assassination shot with one of their senators. Now granted, it's one of their better ones that they'd like to use on a campaign, but facing everybody's resources, they probably can't win. Killing White's senator, they probably can. All right. Um, so we'll move forward and see what the battles bring out. And I think Red's got it in the bag at this point, but we'll see. Well, no, they don't have it in the bag. They have a one in six chance of having it in the bag. Well, the net effects. Um, Red was beaten. Purple has more influence than Red does. So there's no way Red could really dominate things. 
they actually went after a purple planet and didn't take it. They also got attacked by white. And in, in the end, they just didn't have the influence to prevent themselves from getting campaigned against. They tried the assassination. They would have needed a six to succeed. So that was their only real safety valve or uh, chance here. So now we're sitting in a situation, red has nine planets, purple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine planets as well. Green's fallen a bit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, taking some pretty heavy losses. White is up to three, they've gained those extra two. Blue failed on their attack, but they did gain one in a campaign. Yellow, uh, I don't think yellow gained any ground here. This doesn't look like it. They, they made an attempt. Uh, they made the attempt here and they made an attempt against, I think, this one. And in neither case could they outplay. Basically, Blue said, hey, you want to spend my influence and yours? Go ahead. I don't know if somebody else is going to win. And they kind of convinced Yellow to let him roll with like a plus four or something. And they ended up winning it. So it was a chance that either of them could have won. But they had the the edge there. Um, so uh, we're going to go to yet another turn and in this case uh, we've got the purchasing of fleets and senators and we're really beginning to see the senators being the uh, the shepherding of your senators at, in your hand being a very very key factor. The simple fact that purple has no senators I think prevents them from ever winning at this point. They're close, they're in the running, but they just don't have the power to do anything significant. They can send their fleets out, but that's it. And if they lose their last senator, they can't even do that. Now, maybe they could pay a lot to someone like white or blue for a senator out of the hand. Hard to tell. Uh, on the other hand, some of the other people are holding still a reasonable uh, reserve of senators in addition to having some on the board. So, you know, I think that's going to be the key factor here is this exhaustion of senators because as you start collecting corruption, what seemed like no big deal early in the game or maybe a positive, well, when it comes down to being tried for crimes, it's so easy to get rid of someone that they just get spent so quickly once the fighting starts. And the fighting certainly has started in this one. All right, I'm going to load this one up and on to yet another turn. It's going to be an election turn. Who knows, if somebody had enough uh, resources, enough influence, they could perhaps win the elections. Of course, pur poor Purple, with their pile of resources and incoming income of resources, you'd think, ah, oh, they're in a great position. Nah, they can only hold two offices. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the issues here is once you get too weak in terms of senator number, you can't possibly win that way. You have to take the military victory. And even that can become a nothing. Um, it, it could well come to the, fa to the point of you have no chance of expanding any longer. All right, well, got a couple of offices that are uh, not even assigned now, so we'll see those coming back out. And well, maybe we'll see something come to a conclusion at some point, maybe. <laughs>